Determining the ship's position at regular intervals is necessary to ensure the vessel stays on the planned track. In open water, the common method for determining the ship's position is using a GPS receiver. Alternative methods include celestial navigation, dead reckoning, and estimated position. Since the Global Positioning System or GPS is subject to atmospheric and environmental interferences, it can sometimes provide inaccurate position fixes. In coastal waters, more precise and accurate position fixing techniques are used due to limited navigable water. Using radar and visual observations to determine the ship's position in coastal waters provides more accurate positioning information than GPS. In modern navigation, where electronic chart display and information systems known as ECTIS are available on board, Manual fixes are necessary when the vessel is in coastal waters, either by radar or visual observation. This is because ECTIS is integrated with the GPS receiver and can sometimes provide inaccurate position fixes. In today's video, I will introduce one of the position fixing techniques known as cross bearing. This method can be performed using radar or visual observation where bearings of two or more conspicuous objects are needed to determine the ship's current position. Assuming that this is the ship's planned track, and she is sailing along the traffic separation scheme going southeast at a course of 1 2 3 degrees true, with a speed of 12 knots. To determine the ship's fixed position by cross-bearing, we need two or more conspicuous objects. As we can see in the chart, we have two lighthouses, Panjang Selatan, and Muda Selatan. These two navigational aids will be a good reference point for determining the ship's fixed position by two bearings. This is the light characteristic of Panjang Selatan, where FL stands for flashing. One indicates a single flash in each period. 4W indicates the color of the light is white. 4-5 with small s. It indicates the period of the light which is 5 seconds. It means that the light completes one full cycle every 5 seconds, which includes a flash and dark period. 26 with a small m, indicates the height of the light above the mean high water which is 26 meters. And 15, indicates the nominal range of the light which is 15 nautical miles, this is the maximum distance at which the light can be seen in clear weather conditions. For the light characteristic of Muda Selatan, the light flashes a group of three white lights every 15 seconds. It is positioned at a height of 26 meters above mean high water. And can be seen from up to 16 nautical miles away under clear weather conditions. Assuming that we pass along the TSS at night with good visibility, these two navigational aid can be seen at 15 and 16 nautical miles away under clear weather conditions. This will be the actual view at night when we are at the bridge. Several lights can be seen visually. Looking at the large scale chart, there are only two navigational aids. On the smaller scale chart, there might be several navigational aids, buoys, and beacons in the surrounding areas which are visible. Looking at the radar, there are several conspicuous objects reflected in the radar display. To determine which are the two navigational aids that can be seen in the chart, we will check it through visual observation using the characteristics of light indicated on the chart. Since these two navigational aids flash white light, we will disregard other colors visible in the vicinity. Assuming that our last fix is here, at 2100 hour. The ship continues to sail at a course of 1 2 3 degrees true, with a speed of 12 knots. After 10 minutes, the ship's DR position will be here. So Panjang Selatan Lighthouse can be seen in the starboard bow, and Muda Selatan Lighthouse can be seen in the port bow. Using the gyro repeater with an azimuth circle, we will take the bearing of the two lighthouses. This is the azimuth circle which will be secure on top of the gyro repeater. To take the bearing, the object should be within our sight along this small hole, 
and align with this very thin string. The bearing can be read here, inside the glass that looks like this one. Let us find first Panjang Selatan. It flashes a single white light every 5 seconds. Let us observe this white light on our starboard bow, I will use a stopwatch, you can count manually by thousands. I will start the stopwatch when it flashes again. As we observe, one complete cycle is 5 seconds, so this is Panjang Selatan. Let us find Muda Selatan in our port bow. It flashes 3 white every 15 seconds. Let us observe this white light. So it flashes three white lights, within 15 seconds, this is the beacon we are looking for. Once it is identified, take the bearing simultaneously. Assuming the bearing of Panjang Selatan is 148 degrees true, and Muda Selatan is 093 degrees true. Do not forget to note the time, assuming the time the bearing was taken was at 2112 hours. Be sure that before using your gyro repeater, it should be checked and aligned with the master gyro compass. We can plot the bearing now in the chart, but let us check this beacon first on our radar. On the radar, set the electronic bearing line to 148 degrees. The echo along this bearing line will be Panjang Selatan. Next, set the EBL to 093 degrees. This is the bearing line, and this echo along the line is Muda Selatan. Once the beacons were identified in the radar display, we can now use the radar to take the bearing and the range of these beacons. But in this video, I will not use the variable range marker or VRM, we only need the bearing of the object. Let us go to the chart. Let's plot the bearing of Panjang Selatan. Use the navigational triangle or parallel ruler to lay down 148 degrees in the compass rows. This is 148 degrees true. Bring the triangle at the base of the lighthouse on this small circle. Draw a bearing line in the opposite direction of 148 which is 328 degrees true. We drew the bearing line in the opposite direction since we observed the bearing from the ship, not from the lighthouse. This line is called LOP or line of position. Somewhere along this line is the ship's position. To determine the ship's fixed position, we need another line of position. So let us plot the bearing of Muda Selatan. This is 093 degrees true. Bring the triangle to the lighthouse. Draw a bearing line in the opposite direction. The intersection of the two LOPs is the ship's fixed position by cross bearing at 2112 hours. Adding one more LOP will have a more accurate fix. Assuming that this is our third LOP. If the three position lines did not intersect at one point, a small triangle is formed known as cocked hat. This is due to observational errors, instrument inaccuracies, or plotting mistakes. The ship's position is inside the triangle, usually at the center. That's all for now, I hope you find this video helpful, thank you for watching, bye.